is about to happen that has not happened for an age. Entmoot. Hello and welcome to Entmoot Live. It's me, Harry, here uh, once again, uh, taking you through a couple of hours of, of entertainment on this Thursday evening. Um, it's good to have you in. Thanks very much for joining you, uh, joining in. It's, um, it's going to be a fun one tonight because we've got lots of exciting things planned. Um, mainly, uh, we'll introduce our guest host in a few minutes' time, but mainly talking about terrain tonight and a very specific kind of terrain, trees. It all felt uh, the right thing to do because obviously we've been dealing with um, tree bed releases, we've been dealing with ents like quick beam, and we've got all this sort of excitement. Everyone's talking trees at the moment. So I thought, let's talk about the trees that you put on the tabletop and actually fight around because. Um, Basically, they've been talked about so much uh, with lots of different people, these specific ones anyway. Um, they're, uh, they're very lovely, lovely trees to look at. And I can't wait to find out a little bit more about uh, the man behind them. The name is Andrew Pennington. Um, and I'm going to drop him into the studio now uh, because he's live waiting in the wings. It's Andy. Good, good evening. Good evening, Harry. Thank you for having me. No, no, you're most welcome. And um, so, obviously, we've got lots to lots to talk about. But um, I, I want to get as basically, I'm, I kind of want to glean you for for information about these trees because <laughs> yeah. I've seen lots of amazing pictures and photos of these trees. I bought some trees off you not so long ago. They're amazing. I've got some two big cardboard boxes full of them ready for my tournament in uh, a couple of months. So I, I can't wait to ask you um, a bit about them. Um, but I think before we get into trees, I want to do my usual sort of stuff, which is the the news segment almost of the of the thing we'll say our hellos in a minute once everyone starts uh, uh starts saying hello but and um, so do say hello in the comments let me know you're in tonight and um, you know let me know what you're working on if you're painting or or anything else for that matter if you're building if you're painting some trees or building some trees or some ends along with us uh do get stuck in um it looks like uh derry from gardens of wilshire says he's doing some housework uh, I, I i picture you uh doing it in the kind of queen style uh do it you know in uh, uh the I want to break free kind of dress. Um, Nathan says, evening all, tremendous evening. Hi, Nathan. Good evening. And Frederick says, sadly, not painting ends yet as an unexpected, long, important phone call with my brother expected change plans for today. Still have something to eat before uh, I start hobby and roll. Fair enough, Frederick. Nice to have you in and welcome to uh, everyone else. So um, I'm, I'm basically, let's, let's get stuck into this, uh, Andy. So first of all, um, let's introduce ourselves. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I'm, no niche to the channel um, but uh, I, we, I think we've, we've as I mentioned I've heard your name before mentioned by um, Damien and uh, Stephen and people on the Battle uh, Streams in Middle Earth channel uh, they've uh, bought a few things for the uh, Fantasy Fellowship thing um, tell me all about you I mean uh, where uh, does your hobby go back a long way uh, you know where does it all begin for you I guess well goodness Harry the, my hobby started probably many years before you were even born <laughs> Going back to, I'd say maybe when I was 14 years old, so you're talking about the late 80s here, the so born in 75. Um, the young gentleman came to our school, got transferred here, and brought along with him a white wall. Uh. Four or five of us were fascinated by it and introduced us back then. It was Rogue Trader 40k. Um, got a few bits and bobs, the games in the bedroom of one of his friends, like to do, made his own rules up here and there. <laughs> uh, once I reached full of my teenage years, grew out of it a little bit, had a bit of hiatus, and then in the early 20s, bored one day, walked past the shop in my town centre, what was in the window, 5th edition, Warhammer Fantasy. And I was, remember, I was suddenly all the memories came flooding back, went inside, purchased it, and never looked back from there, to be fair with you. And Aye. funnily enough, I used to attend quite a few tournaments, and Speaking to Damien many months ago, um, he asked me if I ever played fantasy, and I'm like, yeah, why? He says, well, I've got your name on a grand tournament from the year 2000, what he attended, so he's, he's what, a good 10 years younger than me. Yeah. So I'll have come across the young 14-year-old Damien O'Byrne at a group GT, and never even realised, all these years later, here he uh. is, one of the main figures on the GTA cell page. Well, there you go. So, I mean, that's that's really interesting. The long story there, and and obviously you didn't mention Lord of the Rings in that. But um, how did the uh, the Lord of the Rings start for you? I mean, you and um, were you a fan of the books? Were you a fan of the the films when they came out? I remember watching the cartoon version um, many many years ago when I was a young kid. Yeah. 
And we'll hold my hand up, and I think there could be quite a few of us. I've never actually read the books. Okay. I did try, but I found myself going back reading the page again, trying to understand it again, and eventually gave up. This was just after the first fellowship came out, when everybody was like suddenly on the high screen. Um, Gaming-wise, I started probably just after the Two Towers. The first box that I bought for Lord of the Rings was the, um, the Two Towers box set with the Urukai and the Ravirum inside it. Um, didn't really play much. My local gaming club, there was nobody else really into it. Um, found it a bit too simplistic, whereas I was fascinated by it. So I kept hold of my models. Um, maybe some 10 years down the line, a young guy came up to the club and just in conversation about various sci-fi fantasy worlds and pop on to the Lord of the Rings, lo and behold, we had maybe half a dozen armies at home sat waiting, just waiting for that one person to play with, and that was me. Oh, that's a lovely, sir. It was like a, it was like a soulmate for the SPG world almost. Yes, yes. And he lasted <laughs> two, two years at my games club and then he emigrated to New Zealand. Oh, well, um, I don't blame him. To, of all the places to emigrate to, exactly. you know, if you're a Lord of the Rings I, fan, I it's not bad. Yeah, I Fair enough. And and from there, uh, Andy, have you ever sort of gone out of it from there or have you been sort of uh, knee deep? Um, not always been knee deep, no. Um, I've never left the scene for the Facebook pages, the buy and sell <clears throat> pages. Always had an interest, watched the movies religiously all the time. Mm. Um, but gaming wise, no, not solid from the start to finish. Um, I think That's the last time, I, I, maybe it's over about. A year and a half since I last played, which is probably said quite a few. Of them. Yeah, well, I was going to say it's it's a year and a half that most people have probably struggled to uh, <laughs> mm. to get some stuff in. But um, right. either way, uh, it, it's 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 great to have you along to hear your your long history meeting the soulmate of SBG. That's really right. cool and getting in. And um, so I, I mentioned already. Uh, so a few people are saying hello in the comments. Callum, good evening. Uh, Shadow and Flame, uh, Dave, sculpting Ents when his li when the live stream popped up. Thanks very much for joining, Dave. And I've seen your Ents; they're amazing. And I've also really really like your uh, uh tree beard conversion the, the um, uh, dave if you haven't seen it has done a fantastic tree beard conversion where he's kind of roaring as as he as he does in the films when uh, when he finds out that uh, most of fangorn has been chopped down and then uh, launches the attack on isengard so amazing amazing uh, work there I, i'm glad to be providing some Entmoot based inspiration for that. Uh, uh, Keith Laurie and Blunderbuss, what a cool name, uh, has commented saying, I had the cartoon version when I was a kid, still have nightmares uh, uh, about <laughs> looking for part two. I know, I know, I think there was a Return of the King made eventually, um, but I think it was independent and it wasn't released properly, but yeah, it wasn't very well received that film, was it? But um, either way, uh, it's great to have, uh, have Andy here uh, this evening because um, we've got lots to talk about, but I'll tease ahead again to some of your wonderful trees. Here are some of your wonderful trees. Um, before we get into talking about them uh, properly later, yeah. I just want to uh, ask about the process, and uh, not about the process, but about, um, you seem to really love making these trees. From what I gather, um, you you kind of just are almost on a constant uh, conveyor belt worth of conversions. And I know I, I know you, you sort of do it as a as a, a side business almost uh, to, to your day job, but, um, you know, it, it must be a passion because I can imagine there's not huge amounts of profit being made on these things. No, I mean, them in the picture there, Harry, were an orchard um, that I sent down to Damien for his farm mm. maggot scenario. Yeah. Um, them trees, in all fairness, are were pre-made. I just added the berries or the orange on and then did the textured bases. Because um, there are some pretty simplistic trees out there that you can buy, buy yeah. at eBay, um, at cheap prices, but they just don't look quite as good as the ones that are handmade. I think that's the thing, isn't it? It's so hard to like, I mean, you can go to a model railway shops and all those sorts of things and buy, buy your trees and buy your Javis scenery cut yeah. type trees. And, and, you know, they're, 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 they're not cheap, but you yeah. know, they are, they do, they're not great quality either. So it, it feels like uh, sometimes you kind of feel like you have to make yourself them. Um, and I guess that's what you did. And, and the, the results are absolutely amazing here. I mean, these, as you mentioned, the berries or the oranges on the trees and there's a couple drops on the, uh, on the floor and things like that. And just the, the quality is absolutely fantastic. So I'm um, really looking forward to having a bit of a chat about, uh, about that in a second. Um, uh, Nathan says very nice, uh, very nice orchards, definite step up from basic trees. Absolutely. And um, 
But I wanted to talk a little bit about the week in uh, SBG because uh, I do. Well, I say the week; it's more like the month. Every uh, every yeah. month, I do a live stream uh, on a Thursday evening, and I know some people have remarked that this is happens to land on the day when uh, Manchester United are playing on the telly. It's not intentional, <laughs> um, but uh, uh, someone has said that. But since we last um, uh, last had a live thing, we've had um, multiple releases, including uh, the Easterlings Dragon Cult Acolytes. Uh, the Fangorn dice, and of course those ends that I mentioned earlier. Um, are, are you? A, have you picked up any of these guys? Have you? Have you done much in the way of um, hobbying over the last sort of few weeks and months, or are you too busy building moment, trees? I suppose. Yeah, at the moment, Harry, I'm tied up on a commission thing for somebody. Yeah. Um, so I always try and get that finished. Cause I feel a bit unfair to have me painting my own things when somebody's already, you know, asking to commit to them. Of course, um, yeah. yeah. I mean, I've always got things on the back burner, but I'm not one for buying models and leaving them in the pile of shame. I'm one of the few gamers who doesn't have the pile of shame. Oh my gosh, uh, I you're, know, you're I a know. rare you're a rare breed because that that yeah. is so un, uncommon. I think I know of one other, um, and that's Dan Collister from the um, Out of the Frying Pan podcast, who appears to have very little. Um, but yeah. but yeah, the it, the pile of shame. I mean, I I, I almost don't want to share it now, but I've got definitely got plenty on my pile of shame. But um, <laughs> So, so what sort of hobby? What I mean, if, if what kind of armies have you got? Have you got a big collection, a small collection, or is it quite? You no, know, at, uh, at the moment, Harry, I'm totally strict on anything middle of strategy battle game. Oh right, okay. Um, long story short, I have quite a size of Rakai Scout Force, uh, which I bought myself over Christmas time. Yeah, you buy your own Christmas tree, which I got painted up, and then unfortunately I had quite a large bill for. Um, one of my dogs. Um, oh, yeah, of course. I heard yeah. about this. Sorry about that. Yeah, and when, when you're not insured, and I live on my own, except I won't go into the details, um, I also had to raise funds pretty damn quick. Oh, my God. Um, so that meant selling quite a lot of what I had. But I'm one of these, I've been there before, I always start a game, it doesn't worry me. It really doesn't worry me. Because a lot of my friends and other people out there have got multiple armies, and um, more than happy to share. And oh, okay. Fun, well, that's, that's nice to hear. The new model and starting an army again. I love it. To be fair, I think that is true. I mean, especially when you've um, already used that army before and then you're yeah. able to maybe conjure it up again and, and yeah. have a, have another bash at it, which is great. Um, but uh, either way, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to hear it. But so so none of these new releases have, have, have burnt a hole in your pocket then, I'm guessing? No, no, not, no, not at the moment, no. No, I, I'm sure. I'm sure we'll wait for that moment. Well, I, I thought I'd briefly share. And um, uh, so these Easterlings, I've been working on mine, and um, that's that's my little guy. I've got a little bit of uh, fencing in the background. Uh, decided to paint them up, and I must say, um, my little review here is they're incredibly complicated and difficult uh, to build and paint. I must say, which is rare. I, I'm usually a big fan of painting. Usually a big fan of. Um, just, just generally um, building and painting. Uh, I'm building not so much, but painting I, I find actually quite easy and enjoyable. But these were an absolute pig to build, and this guy's an absolute paint, uh, pain to paint. Um, but uh, I must say, I'm really, really happy with the result. They look really, really cool. And um, so uh, I'm glad for that. I'm just uh, that was just my tester model, and I've got the the other eight to do so um so they're looking good though uh, really nice models um and the dice of course lots of people got the dice but um i also got a, a tree beard done as well um which i'm really really happy with and you know i, I kind of had to do a tree beard because of Entmoot, really i've got I've, I've got to it otherwise i'd be uh, uh, casting shame on my uh, uh, on my podcast so um so there you go uh, that's some of those things and um, have you seen the new releases, which um, I think people have been mentioning they're out this weekend. I don't think they are. Um, but uh, either way, we've got some uh, very cool new models. Um, certainly uh, theme wise, it's really interesting. What do you think of these? I love them. Love them. I mean, to be fair, I've always been a bit of a dwarf fan myself anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but the new game, what can you say? Fantastic. I know there's a lot of people who weren't happy with them, they said the sculpt worked great. But for me, any releases for the middle of the battle game compared to where we were many moons ago is a, is a win. Yeah, I mean I'm I'm inclined to agree. And actually I think um I, I'm I'm less ex I'm not I wouldn't say I'm not excited about the sculpts because I am I'm just more excited about the 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 theme of these guys. I mean mm -hmm. having a day and iron foot that's um 
you know, uh, old day and nine foot. And there is an old model for him already, which I, I have tucked away somewhere in a box. But um, having him and Thorin, uh, you know, Thorin Stonehelm um, is really cool. And I love how they've uh, they've got someone called Stonehelm and not given him a helmet at all, which is amusing. <laughs> I don't know where Stonehelm comes from, whether he's just got a, a hard head or whatever. But um, either way, I think, I, yeah, people always get uh, get funny because it's a design choice, isn't it? People aren't yeah, always, um, you know, best fans of of everything, but that's absolutely fine. Either way, I'm really excited for them. And I know um, lots of people are. I, I don't think I'd paint it red, even the axe red, even though that's, that's what they've done. And it's probably thematic in some way based on the books. But I'm really excited for that, and actually, I'm going to going to be giving some away in my uh, to my patrons over the next um, next week or so. Once the once the uh, the announcement comes out, I'll I'll be getting a special pack just for my patrons. So if you're planning on pre-ordering them, um, uh, maybe hold off if you're a patron because you might be the winner. Uh, all the details about joining the patron are under the uh, description below. Um, what does everyone else think um, about the the new releases? I, I don't think I've been on since the announcement of this. Uh, let me know in the comments below. Are you are, are you a, is it a thumbs up or a thumbs down for those um, for those new uh, new uh, new guys? The, the the new kit of the Thorin and the the Dane Ironfoot uh, old old guy version. Because uh, I'm, I'm I'm excited to hear what you uh, what you think actually. Um, especially because I'm really excited for War in Erebor. I know we were saying just before you came on, and um, it's not actually confirmed as War in Erebor, but it's certainly leading that way, isn't it? Where else can we go? The latest release is Eastland. And now we've got the two dwarf release, you know, in the twin pack. I'm not a betting man, but I'd say I'd be 99 percent sure it is gonna be war and Erebor. Yeah, I mean, I am a betting man, and I have put a bet on. <laughs> well, I, I made a kind of bet with uh, with Damien and Steve from Batman Streams in Mid Middle Earth about uh, about this uh, an impromptu bet saying because I reckon it will be War in Erebor yeah. as the next one, uh, or certainly something like War in Erebor. You know, it's got the Easterlings, it's got this. I just think it's it's almost destined, and it'll be amazing if it does because um, mm -hmm. it's some it's an unexplored area of the of the law that hasn't been touched on at all by uh, any game since any any sort of book or, or supplement since the since the early days since the uh, 2001 when it first came out so i mean that's an exciting time surely for for anyone who loves this game it's it's amazing to be potentially on the precipice of something completely fresh yeah i mean i've been playing the game i'd say on and off since 2014 um, i don't ever recall there being any supplement for the war and error ball unless i'm wrong Mm. specifically did focus on that which is going to open themselves up then to hopefully more releases to these stories um in particular having been a player of them in the past more pikemen in the plastic box definitely. Oh yeah, we'll have to we'll have to see <laughs> see on that. <laughs> I won't hold any fingers uh, crossed for for pikes, uh, uh, plastic pikes, or or more of them. I've got enough yeah. metal ones actually, so I don't mind. Um, but I know I know it is so frustrating to have all those bows um, and zero zero um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, things, isn't it? But that is very irritating. But either way, um, <laughs> it, it's really cool. I, I'm just I'm just hoping for more Easterling heroes as well, uh, Easterling yeah. heroes, or even more troops as well, because um, it'd be nice to have something else. Um, some people people adding some questions um what's this uh shadow flame uh, dave says i'm i kind of like the look of the new dwarf heroes looking forward to the new supplement i, I see the sense of uh, hesitation there with the kinder uh shadow and flame known for conversions maybe we'll uh, we'll see some cool conversions with the new dwarf heroes i'm looking forward to it dave uh keith laurie and blunderbuss asks what scale are the middle earth sbg figures i believe the warhammer models are 156 heroic scale would it be feasible to model trees to this scale as scatter terrain uh, yeah absolutely we'll we'll talk about um trees in a minute but i'm sure what you make are perfect for any kind of uh war gaming really i mean we're, we're talking 25 mil um usually that the so it's 172nd yeah. i think scale is that right yeah, i'm not 100 sure the trees can be in 15 mil I know mm. certain people do like the trees to be huge, massive, imposing features on the board. Um, Steve Crow's always said he likes them to be like full scale, but for that sort of scale, you're going to be going out of the roof of the gaming club. The same, yeah. Um, but yeah, anything from 15 mil, I'd say, Harry, up to 30 mil. Yeah, and and you can get, and um, we'll talk about this later. And the way yeah. the way your armatures work, um, uh, the armatures you use, you can get v various different sizes, which will work yeah. better for certain um, certain scales and things like that. So, yeah. uh, really, really exciting stuff. And um, so, um, with that in mind, um, 
basically, I'm going to open up the floor now. Um, so we, talk, we talked a bit about the trees. We might as well get stuck into it. We talked about the uh, uh, the new stuff on the Hobby Horizon. Um, let's let's get to, stuck into the main uh, main topic, Andy, and we'll uh, talk about your trees because um, I, 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 they caught that they're almost called the Andrew Pennington trees um, by by Damien. It's Damien. almost like a brand name. Um, yeah. But uh, so, how did you how did you start getting into the trees? for um, for your kind of uh, your hobby or your production i suppose um i've been making these trees for nearly five years now uh, it started off from my own gaming table i wanted some trees um looked around ebay and found quite a different variety but they're all in china never ordered there from there before so i took the phone ordered them in it took maybe about three weeks to come yeah so these ones were already pre-made though so all he did then was plug it into a piece of milli put, push it onto a 32 mil base, then block the base up to finish. Um, so I spent maybe about three years um, buying massive amounts from China, um, making them up, putting them onto bases, and selling them on various forums. They were always popular, um, but I wanted to then go up to a different level, because while they were nice, I always knew they could be nicer ones. Mm. Um, so that's when I got into the next side of it. And that that is one of the the, the most difficult things about these th is that it, trees they, they're so. It, it doesn't matter if they look a bit rubbish on on the tabletop because you're playing the game anyway. But as soon yeah. as you have a really really nice tree, especially with all the foliage on the clump foliage, we can see there. It really adds this kind of element of kind of uh, of immersion that that you just. That you don't really get if you've just got a little rubbish plastic tree or or even those some of those little railway trees they just they don't quite feel right and i guess that's what you're yeah. trying to get to yeah totally there um again quite regular with a friend at his house with a couple of other lads um uh, doing the vault action scene yeah um it always left me a little bit to be desired it would be a piece of felt with a couple of what i call toilet roll brush trees plugged here and there stood up right that counted as cover. Yeah, I, it was adequate, but like you say, it didn't get me immersed in the game as such. Um, so I offered to make them some more trees. They were like, yeah, go for it. And that's when I started in the side of it, which was basically using proper stuff. Fantastic. Well, well, let's let's start start with the basics. So, um, I you've you've kindly agreed to walk us through your your steps, really, to how to build these these guys. So, um, where do we start? I mean, I mentioned the armatures already. Should we should we start there, yeah. or do you want to start the bases? <laughs> I suppose both. Yeah. I mean, in all honesty, the initial setup um, is as expensive as you want it to be. Yeah. Um, I've done trial and error. The one thing yet yeah, I've yet to master is I cannot make my own pump foliage. I bought a blender, I bought various types of foam, um, I've cut up soap, as you name it, um, <laughs> blended it up, but it's just not quite the same. Right. Um, so, I mean, tree wise, this is on the screen. Is that in the carrot? Yeah, yeah, we can see that. So, that's tree armatures, and they're Woodland Scenics ones, aren't they? They are. Um, woodland Scenics do probably about eight to ten different types of trees. But, there's only three which I'd say suitable for middle of strategy battle game. Okay. Um, the ones I buy most predominantly because you get more bang for the buck are the pine trees. You get 44 in a pack, and they measure from four to six inch high. One plugged in. That's on a flat surface. Okay. You know, there's nothing to say you can't put them onto the base to build them up. So you get yeah, that sounds them. about right. Yeah. That sounds about right in terms of scale as well. Because if you think, say, for uh, you know, a, a, a a model is about an inch, so you uh -huh. know, six six times four to six times height. That that sounds about right in terms of yeah. a, tr a normal tree size, doesn't it? Yeah. So, like I say, you get forty four of them in a pack. Um, depending where you go, the two staff bound is fifteen pound posted. You're averaging on eBay about twenty three pound posted. Yeah. Um, so it's worth to chop around. Um, and and there's pack, and how yeah. many are in the back? In the pine trees, it's forty four. It's a lot, a lot in there. Yeah. You get a lot for your value for money out mm. of them ones. Um, the other two packs we do are both deciduous trees. And again, there's one pack which has 28 in, but they're three inch high, which are a little bit on the small side for me, up to six inch high. Mm. So you basically get um, eight of each to make up the 24. You get three inch, um, four inch, and then eight 
and, and how did so, sorry and, and how do they actually work i mean um because you've got a bag there have you uh, can you sort of give us a, i'm just knocking all my glue off the table uh, if, could you could you give us a sample of how these things actually work because i know they come flat yeah basically that's how it'll come it's just yeah the frame's flat with the base attached to it yeah so all, all you seem to doing is twisting off the base getting rid of the tab connector yeah once you've done obviously the trunk itself is wired inside so you just literally twist with your hands and fingers shave your branches once you're done plug it into your base don't go in at this stage just plug it in and then mm -hmm. basically ready to go with that right yeah so and it's it, it's easy oh, then that i mean that that's quite an easy start isn't it yeah, okay. i mean just bear with you harry all of this is very very easy it's just trial and error and getting the right material mm. i mean I, i've had a lot of you know three bases what i've been because i just couldn't quite get x y or z right it's taking me in my yeah. time you know but once you get the right things there you'll fly for it so yeah bend your armature into shape twist your branches around and then comes the next part now a lot of people have asked what glue did i use to get their Stick on. Oh, hold on. Before we go into the foliage, you, you haven't mentioned the bases now. Because what sort of materials would you base this on? Because people use various different things. I mean, I, I've used cardboard in terrain, I've used yeah. cereal box card, you know, uh, MDF, ply board, um, you know, fiber board, the foam board. What, 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 do you, what would you recommend? Again, save yourself a bit of time um, and cost effective. Simple MDF. Two mil, right. you can get it up to whatever mil you want, but generally the stocks that sell these do between two to four mil. Uh, the reason I don't do four mil is it creates too much of a step on the table if you don't yeah. have beveled edges. And to be fair, I don't have time to bevel edges on like that. I was going to say, you'd have to then sand it down or with a exactly. file or something like yeah. that, and that seems like a faff, doesn't it? So, I mean, we're coming all shapes and sizes. That's probably the biggest size I've come across. That, Harry, is a walk-in. 27 centimeters by 22 centimeters okay you know, so, so it's that's, the base, that's the base for it um the one thing you must do though with your base is before you even attempt to put anything on there freeze whatever or glue varnish them seal them seal both sides i've had it in the past where i got excited i got all my equipment in i'm like yes i want to make these freeze i put the tv glue on woke up the next day the base looks like a quaver. Um, ended up in thin. So oh, all I buy is just one of the aerosol um, varnishes from the rain, Wilkinson, wherever you might want to go. Cost about a fiver, probably about a hundred of these bases with them, and that's both sides. And in warm weather, it's probably drying about 15 minutes. Right, okay. The side. Um, sorry, what, what kind of varnish was that, did you say? Um, it just comes in a spray can. It's mm. in the rain... Um, Wilkinson, yeah, so just any, any, yeah, any, any wood varnish, but you want obviously to save money. We all want to save money, so we can buy more models. And and yeah. I know you, uh, you so this is to stop it warping, but do you know how that process works? Because I'm intrigued as to if there's other methods that people could use that you know, if you've got some other kind of varnish that would do the same job, or yeah, I'm also I was fortunate a while ago that one of my friends gifted me this, it's been in the cupboard for ages. Harry, um, I ran out of aerosol during lockdown and then I remembered oh uh, yeah clear, big big on. tub of matte varnish yep nice. the brush. that'll do it real thin layer got to go on pick up whatsoever job done jobs job are done. good and fantastic so so then you so you get in the base so you've got to glue the base down onto the the mdf so i mean is that just pva glue or super glue or, or? no I, I always use super glue just because basically the pva takes a lot longer to dry right okay um, for speed so, but... yeah so all i'll do after i've sealed both sides a couple of bases depends on how many trees you want to put on the base um i'll glue them down first and then you've got to take it from there fab Fab. Okay, now, so, I, I mean, I've got my, in fact, I've got some to my side here. So I've got my uh, uh, Woodland Scenics tree armature. So I've got some pine ones. I'm going to, I'm going to, 
have a go. Um, not live quite, because I'm not going to be able to do the whole thing, am I? But um, I might as well give it a bash. I'm, I'm trying to get into this packet. I should have I should have prepared this. Uh, <laughs> like a, a, an art attack style thing. Oh, this is a tiny one. I've got some tiny ones. I've cut that up, haven't I? Look at how tiny that is. All right, oh, well, anyway, yeah. so I'm, I'm, I'm give it a twist anyway, because we can make some little bushy type things. So that's that's it. So it's just... Twist, oh, yeah, that's, that's not so bad. I can do that. Yeah, it's very easy to twist in the chair. Even the individual ones, which it's are... Quite it's to, quite satisfying. <laughs> it's funny enough, it's quite therapeutic. Yeah, it um, is. It feel, yeah, oh, that's, oh, that's a bit tiny, but yeah. yeah the, I mean, the larger deciduous trees, obviously, are individual long branches, so they take a bit more, you know... Oh, okay. Well, maybe more power to get them into shape. Well, maybe I shouldn't have bought this set. That, that's like, that's... Well, which that's ring that's ring wraith try uh, ring wraith size there we go ah. oh it's only double i mean you, you get a tree that's uh slightly du du well, as big as that it. people don't seem to remember that trees actually grow from saplings exactly exactly i'll i'll get put some used to it there's a bigger one that's a bit better so um so then yeah i was gonna say this is basically do it one branch at a time with them harry right uh. Here we go. Oh, sorry. Oh, right. So this, so this, this shows me automatically that you're you're clearly a pro at this. Um, oh, I see. Yeah. So I'm getting there. I'm getting something. Yeah. Look at that. It's it's coming out. It's coming up. End move. Look at that tree expert here. So that yeah. And actually, I'm already seeing there that you get, when, once you've twisted it, you're getting this kind of um, a bit of variety. And I suppose you you then go, oh, okay, that one's not quite off at that angle. I can twist that off to that angle. Yeah, just play around with them. Try and make them all look a little bit you know unique. Exactly, yeah, and I suppose, and that's what the, I suppose that's the advantage of this. Rather than having just a, a pre-made kind of um, tree uh, yeah. that's already, yeah. you get every single one is almost going to be different because you've you've twisted it slightly differently, and 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 then if you use different flocks or whatever on it, that it will look yeah. even more different. So, oh, that's cool. So there we go. We've got whatever that is, a deciduous yeah. tree. Um, Keith Laurie and Blunderbuss asks, I think an eighty foot, uh, eighty foot tall mature oak would work out to be seventeen point four. One four inches tall at one point five one fifty six scale. Could you use a very heavy base to support such a tall model? Um, that's a good question. I would recommend maybe not doing an eighty foot tall mature oak. And um, I'd imagine uh, you can probably get a, a shorter shorter tree, and it would be fine. But I don't what, know what you think what, on that. What did he say it would be in inches wide? He said seventeen inches tall, which feels. I have. I have made. Yeah, I have made. Um, 20 inch tall tree myself out of balsa wood right so you start so with balsa wood I, yeah because i'm guessing there are no woodland scenic armatures for that oh, but it's no, the same no, process not, not i guess um uh, no i mean the, the balsa wood one is quick and go over we've literally got the top of wire brush um scored down the balsa wood to create obviously like a bark grainy effect yeah and then you can stand the knife to chisel it into a point at the top and then added about... the the branches in at the side myself uh, yeah it, it, it took a hell of a long time mate. yeah I, I can imagine and and nathan's pointed out that may be excessive for a table i i think he might be right it may and, and keith laurie admits his maths could be wrong uh, to be <laughs> fair uh, I, it may well be wrong but either way a, a 17 inch um, tree does seem a little that would be like insanely tall trees i would have thought maybe if you were yeah, because um, unless you're thinking like the Galadriels, uh, you know, Lothlorien trees or, you know, big redwood trees from North America, those sort of things. But then that's not, or, you know, but uh, maybe no. that's just a bit silly. I don't know. Yeah, my mum was doing many moons ago for a commission for a chap who played Star Wars Legion and wanted an end, end off the the table. Yes, that makes a lot oh. of sense. In fact, I've seen some of those uh, recently, the kind of Endor themed things, and they look really cool. Uh, I thought they'd work quite well as a Lothlorien themed as well. Mm -hmm. And so the next stage, we've twist, so I've, I've twisted this, um, uh -huh. and I imagine it's glued to a base. Um, what what do we do with it? How do you how do you glue it, uh, glue um, glue it, the, the the foliage on? And what foliage do you use? So let's start with the glue, I guess. Yeah, glue wise, um, please don't use PVA glue. Um, while okay, it, so while I'll, I'll throw my PVA glue away then. I, I had it prepared. <laughs> while it will create the strongest bond, sadly, it takes a long, such a long time to dry, Harry. And when you've got it on your arm matured as well, when you're putting the foliage on, because there's no instant bond, it's like mm. it's dried off, mate. Right. So, I mean, I, I shopped around. I tried uh, floor towel adhesive, but when you spray it, it's too stringy. It makes a hell of a mess, mate. 
Um, right. Uh, okay. So I should get. I should oh, chuck this out of sight as well. <laughs> Sorry, Harry. <laughs> I've got all. I've got all these things prepared because these are the things I thought that I might end up using for the trees. And and I was going to do what I, I was going to basically do this. I was going to just experiment with the ball and see what happens. I mean, I'm, oh, I've got to just break the, the lid the off now. The thing is, you can use um, the spray can. Yeah. The uh, wash island, but it's, if you're spraying it indoors, mate, I wouldn't advise it without a mask. Because the, um, the old dog comes off it, it's quite potent. Right, sure. Um, the best thing I found, I was shopping around and also going on proper railway making forums and what have you, um, was a product called Hobby Tack. Uh, Hobby Tack, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So this is um, direct, this is what, this is from the same company that you're getting the armatures from as well, isn't it? So it is, yeah. I mean, they're basically, these people who make model railway setups are the creme de la creme of the in my opinion. Yeah. They, they're the next step above. Um, we've seen, yes, while there's the most expensive brand out there, they're also like the biggest brand name because they make the best. Um, so, yeah, probably a, a tiny bottle comes with um, an application brush inside. Paste it all over your armature, plug it into its face, leave it. If you're in a decent warm room or outside, within 20 minutes, it will dry almost clear totally. It'll be quite shiny. Um, but it's quite, quite clear. You the places with white on doesn't matter. All you're doing then is very tight. I'll go into the foliage in a minute. This stuff is incredibly sticky. Right. It's so it's tacky. so it's kind of sticky, but it sort of it, it's not going to dry. So it's not going to dry quickly once it's, it's sticky. No, no, no. This how it never dries. Oh, I it see. It will stay permanently tacky. Therefore, in all games, somebody will lean over the table, knock a tree, foliage can fall off. You pick it back up, pick it back on again, mate. Put your your branches will tacky. That's that sounds good. I like it. It's tacky, yeah. but I, it's tacky, but I love it. Um, that's fantastic. <laughs> so, uh, I, I, Nathan says, I hope Harry's failures are scripted. They really aren't. Um, no, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> we, I wish I could have said, Oh, we prepared all this in advance. We did talk a little bit about um, uh, what we were going to talk about, but uh, no, not about the individual products used. So, um, so Hobby Tack is that an expensive glue? Because as I've said, I've already got all these glues. Um, yeah, um, again, shop around. Yeah. Every, everything now, Harry, what I buy, apart from the bases, comes from one specific shop somewhere in Birmingham, uh, not on eBay. It's a proper model railway shop. Right, yep. Um, I've used them now maybe a dozen times, and if I order say, tomorrow morning, I'll have the product, even on a Saturday, the very next day. Wow, that's brilliant. That no, is really good. So the hobby tax, buying up from that chappy online is £7 a ball. Okay. That's uh, not out bad. of that, Harry, I can maybe do. 150 armatures 150 armatures okay yeah so there we go i mean and i can see i, I was because i thought with the trick with the branches like this um uh -huh. with a brush i thought that's going to be a faff so i thought if i get my um ceiling tile spray then maybe that'll um maybe that'll work and it'll it'll do it all quickly but i mean you're the pro so and you've told me not it's to it. do that <laughs> it's like it's like the old um like the brush applicator what comes with it Oh yeah, okay. So it is like the old, it's like the, the sort of PVA uh, glue paste or yeah, whatever it is that the I've seen it on uh, American uh, films about uh, with school where you see the kid eating PVA glue and things like that. So uh, that, that's brilliant. So that's that's the glue. So uh, uh -huh. to recap for those people who are just joining us, um, uh, which includes Adam, hi Adam and Michael, evening. Um, we've got the tree. We've got it on an MDF base, um, which you've you've. I bought the bases ready made basically, but I suppose if you've got two yeah. mil thing and a jigsaw cutter, you could do that. Uh, and then we've put a hobby tack on it. Now we need to stick something on said tree armature. Now, um, before you reveal what you do, um, I'm going to reveal my box of things that I've bought. Uh -huh. uh, so I've got something called Tree Canopy. Now, this is from um, Geek Gaming Scenics. I watched yeah. some of his videos and the yeah. price is on there. That's five pounds. That's five pounds worth of turf that you could probably it's find in the forest. Far, sadly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it doesn't go very far, does it? No. And also, it's probably, literally, he's probably gone out to the woods somewhere and picked up. Um, but I suppose, you know, I'm paying for it. So, um, so the other I thing... Mean, is, in, in the event, I've bought a lot of stuff from Luke. Um, yeah. Like, game and it's just good stuff. 
So there's there's this stuff as well. This is clump folios, and I have this. This is a geek gaming one, and um, but there's also the stuff from um, Javis as well. So this, if you're looking carefully, uh, uh -huh. it might not. Uh, I don't know whether you, whether it's focusing properly. But this is just clumps. This is like little little balls of kind of. I don't know what it is. It's like flock glued together and mixed with paint or something like that. So and that four pound fifty. That's a bit. That's a lot in it. Um, it is for the size, mate. Yeah. Um, what else have I got? What did I buy? There's another one in here somewhere. There's, oh, there's there's some bags of sand. Oh, here it is. Um, so there's this thing, fine leaf foliage from Ooh. Woodland Scenics. You're fair scenic. out, you're now fair this, out for that. Yeah, this. I think it this was somewhere near. Was it 10, 15 quid? Something like that. Either way, I bought a couple of boxes of that. So, um, have I wasted all my money? Um, and what what do you, what do you okay. glue on it? The, the I can see already. Was... Sorry, I, just before I'm you go, Andy, really I can see you, your, fa your face. You're already going, like, your, your sort of hands in, uh, <laughs> hands in face or all this sort of um, stuff. Yeah. Face in palm, that's what I mean. The finally foliage from Woodland Phoenix is okay, but it's extremely brittle. It's right, crumbly. okay. It's very crumbly in, in texture. Um, I got some of that free with some foliage I bought, but you can keep that hardy because it is amazing when you put it onto the bases of like wiry, thorny bushes. Right. But, so that stuff does come in handy, but probably not for free, it's not the site. For a display board, yes, for a gaming board, uh, no. Oh, no. So I've got, I've got this. This, right. I've got two of these. I've got an olive green one and a light green one, and it does look yeah. quite light. But I mean, if I sprayed it, if I stuck it stuck it on with a hobby tack and sprayed it with all this, would that be would that help, or am I just no, no, no? Oh uh, well, um, I've got loads of uh, anyway. The, on the plus side, I've got oh, <laughs> Nathan's just uh, said it. On the plus side, I could give all this away at the tournament. Uh, no, it's fine. I, I, I'll, I'll find some use for it. So sorry, I'm, I'm interrupting and um, derailing things slightly. Go on. So, so your, your, what kind of clump, uh, foliage is the, are you using usually? Right, the, the Jarvis one you have. Uh, I'm presuming because they do different ones. That's the problem. You've got um, underbrush foliage, um, bushes, hedgerow foliage, tree foliage. It depends which one you for. It says clump on. on it. It says clump. That's all right, it says. So that might be more of a generic one. Yeah. The, the Jarvis one almost feels quite similar to, you know, fake plants where there's like a moss inside what you push into, the plant will go into it. And it's made, I don't know what it's made of. It's almost like polystyrene, but it's not. Oh, is that uh, that Oasis stuff? Is it that? I can't, I, remember I, don't, it's called. I can't remember what it's called. The Jarvis stuff is very similar to that. You can actually. Pinch it with your fingers and it'll stay into that shape. Uh, yeah. You can manipulate it quite a lot. Um, again, I've gone back to Woodland Scenics, what I use. Um, went through various different types. You do one called Plum Foliage, which is basically your jack of all trades foliage, mm -hmm. master of none. That already comes torn up into quite small pieces, which is great. But I often find that I like to put bigger chunk of pieces, like the deciduous trees you have, putting little bits on the end of there. It's just, yeah, that's the one. Mm -hmm. You put little pieces on the end, and it doesn't feel bushy and filled out. Um, but that's yeah. how the foliage comes. But that plump foliage. This is by far and away the better one. Foliage oh. clusters? Yeah. Right, I'll, I'll take them out of the pack, Harry, uh, as to why I think it's way better. It's basically almost like a giant bat sponge. Oh, yeah. So it's like one big thing, isn't it? Yeah. And you just tear chunks off to whatever size you want, mate. Ah. So if you want them to do like a really, really full deciduous tree, you tear the chunks off. If you're doing your pine trees and you want to do one which is maybe, you know, not as, you know, full of foliage, tear it into smaller pieces rather than with chunk pieces. Yeah, and I suppose you know because that that's ideal. If you've got a tree like that and a tree like that, you you've got to be able to have a different thing, and at least you don't have to buy yeah. two different bags, then, do you? Yeah, I mean, admittedly, mate, that stuff there uh, will probably do me about. I can probably do a pack of the pines at forty-four trees, and maybe a deciduous at twenty-eight with one pack. That's ten quid per pack. Right, that's with one of those bags. That's really that's pretty good. That's going to go away, isn't it? It is. That comes in three colours. Dark green, mid green, light green. Mm. Now, 
what I would say to those who are starting out, if you want to make their own tree, I would be saying, I would do it for my own personal use. I couldn't afford all the different colours and shades for some foliage. So what I did, uh, oh, there is, I went and ahead and bought the dark foliage. Reason being, I had tons and tons of different plots of green plots to base in uh, models on. Oh, yeah. Basically normal plots. So by buying the dark green one, if I wanted to dry it up a little bit, all I did was sprinkle the block all over it, a light green block, and then sealed it with hairspray. Ah, oh, right, okay. Now, there's a reason I sealed it with hairspray as well. Once you've made your tree up with your foliage, do not whatsoever spray it with PVA glue. The Hobbitax water soluble. Right, I see. So if you've used that combination of things, then it's going to completely ruin those trees, is it? it basically, your hobby type becomes non tacky and your and the weight of the water and the PVA will just basically slide the foliage slowly up your stem, and you will cry like I did. Ah, oh, right. Okay. So, so if say for example, um, I bought some um, some trees off you, and then mm. one of the one of the the trees the clump fell off. And I then sprayed it with PVA glue. That would be a bad thing to do. No, no. I mean, if, if one piece, you know, one little clump came off, you could stick it up at it on with PVA glue because it's just that one point of the tree which is getting PVA glue on. Okay. What I'm saying is, once you're at that stage with the tree fully made, don't attempt because this is still sponge to touch. I know a lot of people like to seal things down with PVA glue. You're fine to do the base of the trees. Where the armature plugs into, but don't do the tree directly. Right. Okay. Basically, you, your hobby back, which is on that one, will dissolve and become basically mush. Well, fingers crossed I haven't ruined your trees that, <laughs> that oh. you sent me then. <laughs> Because <laughs> I did spray one, uh, I did spray one or two, and um, because uh, there's a, a, a one lump, because after the journey, a couple of lumps fell off, and I thought, oh, well, yeah. I'll just spray a bit of PVA, and that'll be fine. So fingers crossed. When I put them back in the box, they hadn't all fallen apart even worse. Yeah, um, no. I'm sure it'll be fine. They all look fine anyway. And um, but either way, that's 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 really useful to know. Um, so I wouldn't have thought about that. And it's all those sorts of traps that people fall into. I know um, when I made um, some resin, uh, some resin pour bit stuff with a, a woodland scenics um uh, water bait uh, it was like a pva based water resin thing and um it said don't mix with pva glue and i thought oh, that, yeah no that's fine and and i'd sort of forgotten i glued some of the tufts or something on with pva and i thought oh it'll be fine and i poured it in and then it ended up sort of looking a bit cloudy and white and um so it's all those little tricks that you find um the more you do these things so really useful for for sharing that um yeah. thank you very much for that one uh, uh hello to um jake who's just joining us as well uh, I, I know p people are commenting in if you have questions by the way everyone um for andy and his uh, his tree uh, bonanza that we're going through i know we're, we're halfway through um the tree bonanza then please please do uh, drop your comments and questions in below because there's some awesome trees um the the uh, andrew is is uh, has been showing us and um, has been telling us how to build. I mean, th this is the quality of stuff that we're uh, we're talking about tonight. And I know we've just been focusing on the armatures and things like that at the moment. But um, but this is this is where you start, isn't it? And then you get some really really nice really nice bases from there. So we've got to that stage. You so you're you're doing clumps, but as we can see from this picture, there's loads of different types of clumps. And is that all pretty much the same kind of stuff? Is it all the same um, clump foliage, or do you use like a variety of different materials with your um, foliage. Yeah, on that actual picture of where well, you just clicked off there, Harry, there's which is like um, the previous one. Next one on. If you look at the front three, the middle one on the right hand side, yeah. you've got like a light olive green colour, which was um, more of a natural green. Yeah. That was a mixture of Jarvis, which was the olive front foliage, and Hidden Phoenix. Right. Um, and some of the lighter greens on the Left hand side from the trees were some clump foliage that I tried making myself, which did oh. turn out okay, but 99% of it I wasn't always happy with. Now that's interesting because that was going to be my next question. Um, is this is it this one that you made yourself? The no. one in the middle? No, okay, no, oh, that's no. interesting. So, because uh, I'm, I'm, 
like I've seen people on the internet and and Geek Gaming is one of them, Luke's APS on YouTube, who's who talks about making his own um, flock and his own clump yeah. foliage and all this sort of stuff. And he makes it look really easy. And it's like making a massive bucket of, of flock and things like that. And I kind of think, I mean, I'm going to end up buying like five, five liters of paint and you know get a back, whole bag of sawdust and mixing and i just think is this worth it for for just me making a little bit of flock what do you think no in all honesty i bought myself um, i think it was november last year i couldn't be saying i'd watched the tutorial i thought how can i save money on the which i find i consider the foliage to be the most expensive part of it yeah um so i went out and got myself a blender for a tenner and um, so i bought various different recommended by different models on youtube um of materials to blend up into little bits. Gave it a whack and went to the rain spot and uh, cheap two pound acrylic paint that we can sell up there. Um different shades of green. Got on top of the bucket, whack it through the blender, drained off the water, put it into the bucket. Um some of them give you measures of what I'm just put in a ratio. Others just say, well, just do what you want. You know, the more glue, the more firm the crunch will be. Um, so I did all that, put it onto a baking crate, squash it together into the clump, and it must have taken nearly two weeks to dry Harry. <laughs> two weeks? But, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I'm going to scratch in, that off you know, my to-do list then. <laughs> yeah, this, this, were, this were in a, a room where I was putting them on top of radiators overnight um, and baking them. So you're continually turning the club upside down, back to front. But no matter how much PVA grass you put in there, it didn't hold the clump. So it ended up being more straggly little pieces, which is fine. Because then you can use that to put onto your faces later on instead of putting your expensive all these clusters on there. That's interesting, and because I mean. It- I, they must have, some of these hobbyists you mentioned on YouTube. They must have uh, worked on these videos or worked on these strategies yeah. many, many times. And then uh, it's really interesting to hear, you know, someone going, "You know what? I've watched a video. I, I think I could do that." Because that's exactly what I thought. I thought I, I've, I've gone down the terrain rabbit hole, honestly, Andy. I really have because I'm, <laughs> I'm interested. I've, I've got this big tournament in July, which um, ex- excitingly is now definitely happening. Yeah. Um, if you, if if you're a big uh, Lord of the Rings FPG fan, and um, you know, I, I've got a I'm going to be announcing some of the tickets on Monday. It's only for the people who reserved so far. And But I was thinking, right, okay, I'm going to build some terrain. So I've got these armatures. I've been watching videos. And, and you know, I bought those trees off you. And I thought, oh, you know what? I've, I've seen these things. Um, I could do this. I could do it. And then, you know, you're, you're, you're disheartening me in some ways, Andy. Because I thought I could make I could make some cheap clump, clumps of, of foliage. But... Maybe maybe it is just too much effort, and I should get someone like you to do it because you're a pro. <laughs> um, the making side of it, Harry, making your own effort and reward, it was just too time consuming, waiting mm. for it all to dry. Yeah. And then the end result for trees, it was just a no go for me. I've, I've seen um, no bolt the terrain, the terrain shoot on YouTube. Yeah, he's Matthew fantastic. Following, amazing. Um, I followed his techniques using exactly the same foam that he was using. Uh, the same methods. You want big chunks, don't put it on to blend too long. The more finer you want it, blend it for etc. But yeah, it still didn't turn out on this back here. You just do you just wonder whether they whether they have a specific type of blender or whether the paint that no, you, you know it, who knows? Basically, any, any acrylic paint is fine for it. Any PVA he said was fine for it. He said it was all down to the ratios of um, clump foliage to PVA because he was using proper like measuring cups and what have you and he literally did experiments where he'd do like a 5 mil cup, a 10 mil cup, 20 mil cup and then he'd have them laid out on a massive long table and he'd go through them one by one as to how much the paint had soaked into the um, sponge when he tore it open some of them hadn't even gone a third of the way in and then it was pure white sponge all the way to the middle Others, they absorbed it completely and it's still wet in the middle. You know, so it's, it's all trial and error, Harry. You know, it, and I feel I th- a lot of people don't have the patience for it. I think that's the thing, isn't it? And and that's always worth thinking about, isn't it? That, mm. you know, it 
if you're if you're really interested in doing the terrain, and, I, and to be fair, I have been. You know, I've been experimenting. I've I've had a, quite a lot of fun. I've had more success with sort of um, the uh, the kind of polystyrene building making, to be honest, than anything else. Yeah. Um, but I, I and I'll show you a picture of my, my uh, bridge in a minute. But um, like the those sorts of things are the uh, the things that I'm good at. But and I kind of thought, well, maybe maybe trees maybe trees aren't aren't as hard as I thought they were. I think I think genuinely, generally they they a, a good tree is really hard to make, um, and and maybe that's that's why yours looks so great. And no, actually, I, I truly have it. They're the most frightening hobby um, aspect of model making that I've come across. Mm. I mean, I've been painting since I was what fourteen years old. Yeah, um, and even now I'll buy models that scare the life out of me. I've, I've even been put off buying a model because I look at them. Oh, there's some. I must admit, I agree. Actually, some of the stuff that um the, the in the 40k and the uh, Sigma yeah, range well. from Games Workshop at the moment, they're like they're just insanely detailed. And I think, well, look, I'm going to take me years to paint that stuff. And even the new Forge World thing I mentioned is is too is busy. But I mean, this sort of stuff I can do. I can do polystyrene bridges, yeah, and nice. you know, nice. that's not. And, and I was quite happy with that. I mean, it looks a little cartoony. I think the green's a bit overworked, but but actually, it's not too shabby. Not too shabby. But trees. Oh, okay. Ah well, thank you. Um, trees, not so bad, not so bad. Uh, if you want to watch my video uh, attempt to do that, um, it's it's live on YouTube right now. And um, the um, we're to, someone uh, who's commented. Uh, okay, Nathan says um, he wants to make some use some armatures to make dead trees. Um, is that something you've ever had a go at? Because I mean, yeah, I mean that you could almost glue that on somewhere and just leave it as is, couldn't you? I mean, would that look okay? Yeah. I mean, um, fun enough. Um... His daughter got lucky. Yeah. He was um, going back to about six months. He did a tutorial on how to make basically scatter terrain um, from putting his own bases, beveling the edges, etc. But again, he had all the equipment in his own home, so advantageous, right? And and that's the thing. I know um, in Australia, people they, people have like oodles of space because yes, like it's the, it's a massive country and there's like fewer people who live there than they do in in the uk so they've got like yeah. massive garages and they've all got like a you know a workshop and a shed and everything but i don't but, think I've... yeah going back to nathan's question what he did uh, was on some of his bases he literally just laid the armature down on its side on the base next to the, you know the actual built up ones um and just you know, around the around and use a pair of snips to clip off some of the um, some of the branches on the armature to look like it snapped off. Yeah. Um, the other way to replicate it, and um, I've always been a big fan of if you have it for notes, even better, is I pick up all that kind of twigs and little sticks. Yeah. Just different shapes. Put them in the oven half an hour and hundred degrees if you kill anything on there. And they look amazing when you put them onto the basic and blend them in. You know, I re I recently bought a uh, a sort of a bulk buy of loads of toy soldiers and stuff and it had a, a fair bit of terrain and things in it. And one of the things in it was was literally a twig. There was this twig and it was like this really cool knotted twid, uh, twig. And I thought, actually, that's that's a hell of a lot better than these armatures. It looks really cool. And yeah. um, it's uh, really smart. And, and actually, yeah, the, you know, and the same with this sort of stuff, this um, sort of willowy thing. This is, this is going to be a, a I bought this as like one of those um, it's like a path edging thing meant to be anyway it's made yeah. of willow but i'm going to turn it into a fortress at some point hopefully uh, like a, a panacea oh, yeah. yeah and those sorts of things you can, i mean i could have found a lot of willow on the floor in the forest but um that was only a fiver or something on the internet so um but yeah just go out and pick pick up some twigs it's not so bad is it um yeah oh uh we've got another question from jake uh, jake says do you have any uh, tips for making a willow tree all my attempts at making fronds end up looking like squid tentacles sprouting from a tree. That's an interesting one, yeah, because willow uh, it has a very distinctive look. It what? does. Um, sadly, it's something I've never attempted to make. Ah, Even okay. though I enjoy doing sandal trees, I know my limits. <laughs> I, I, have, I have purchased um, previously some almost like Japanese, Japanese, Japanese style willow trees um, from an eBay shop in China. And it came in like a pink color, um, a green, yellow, white, almost like blossomy willow types. 
but they're the only place I've ever seen them. But if you buy them pre-made from one of the manufacturers like uh, Woodland Phoenix, you're paying maybe it's twenty-five pounds or fifty-three pounds. Well, no. Jake, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> we we can't answer that one. I, I I think I think if you just start with the basic stuff, uh, and then maybe maybe just have a go, have an experiment, like uh, uh, like Andy's been saying, you know, just g- I mean, give it a go. Funny enough, um, one of the names which we chat earlier, Dave Fredericks from Chatham Plain. Yeah, I did purchase back in 2015. The range of train what he used to make. Um, they were absolutely fantastic, but sadly they had to continue them. Um, and one of them was in Willow Tree. Yes, what, that is true. Yeah, and what he used was the long black feathers. Um, he might be able to elaborate a little bit more. Just that. Yeah, uh, actually, Dave Dave has been in the comments. I don't know whether he's uh, busy uh, or, or anything at the moment. He might be uh, still, I think he said he was building an end to something. Um, yeah, if you, if you have any help, if anyone in the comments has any help, uh, then um, please do. Because we're all, we're all, I'm not a pro and, you know, it's, if we don't know the answers to everything. So um, absolutely get stuck in, uh, stuck in there in the comments. And um, Michael says, uh, I've got some painted and flocked hobbit holes, but need to add some flowers to the front and herb fruit vegetable gardens to the back i know it's not trees but any thoughts welcome yeah what do you think enough, what would you um, recommend last year during the first lockdown i probably spent three months solid making grass tufts and flowers ah you see i was thinking you were going to mention these these lovely fruit orchards and I, I, I was going to ask what the balls uh, that you use to make the oranges are um again a couple of sellers on ebay um I don't recall the exact word in what I put in the search engine. Um, I just typed in model fruit trees. And obviously, these came up. They came, it was, all they are is little pieces of polystyrene. Tiny pieces of what now, sorry? Polystyrene. Oh, right. So it's little balls of polystyrene. Yeah, colored. Oh, that's I, an interesting got, idea, Michael. I don't know whether you, uh, you like that idea. If orange, it, they, they come pre colored orange, red, yellow. I can't remember what color it was. But I suppose you could you could make that yourself if you've got a bit of polystyrene with ball, little little tiny balls. You could just break it up and make a few of the little balls or something. Or I guess you could do anything with them little little tiny balls to make fruits and potatoes and all that sort of stuff. That could be good. Yeah, I mean regarding grass tufts um, and what have you, I found it more satisfying. I used to buy quite a lot again from eBay, but I found it more satisfying making my own. Um, yeah. So I, I, I think I spent maybe sixteen pounds on the strongest bargain range um grass applicator yeah um it will not take anything more than six mil grasses anything longer than that is not powerful enough to stop it hard once it grows found it out yeah i found um, that yeah i bought various different colors um put by ebay again and um, wanted to make them so they had i previously was using pva glue on top of parchment paper but then the base of this bar was solid and couldn't manipulate it onto an uneven surface. So instead, uh, I asked around and from again deep gaming, mm-hmm. there's a specific glue which you can use, which remains permanently again sticky. So you basically stick it down and you can peel it off and it's just here. So it's going to be where you're in it. This is this was the next glue on my pile. Is it this one? Fast drying basing glue. That's the one. There you go. You see, I thought that, that might come in use at some point. I yeah. clearly spent too much money on glues. That stuff uh, is like PVA from the offset, but once it dries, um, it's tacky. But Luke did say not to use it on three armatures. I didn't say why. Oh, oh God! I've just, I've, I've just. No, he did, I, I mean, he, he said that, but I couldn't understand why not because if it remains tacky. Like the hobby cat, what is the difference? Oh, well, yeah, exactly. Well, I, I'll give it a go then. I'll give it a go. It's just sort of started um, leaking prematurely here. Um, yeah, I don't know why. You have, to, you have to apply it quite thinly. It might oh, okay. Maybe over half hour, 45 minutes to get packaged. Made a right mess, lot. I've just, I've literally just opened it and it's squeezed and it's gone everywhere and it's ah. Oh. Right. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I'll, I'll <laughs> stop, stop doing that. Um, but uh, that's interesting. So, um, and that was you, you use that in in blobs and then just put a bit of flock on. Do you need the static grass applicator? Because I know most people who don't make terrain don't really have them. And and I, I, I use a bit of flock and it seems to work fine on bases. But 
I, yeah, I've only uh, just started using a static grass applicator, and I have to say it didn't yeah. work first time, I mean, and it was a bit rubbish. I mean, two, two mil, I've used that on some bases recently uh, for Blood Bowl team, and that does appear to stand up, but it's only two mil, so it's... Yeah, it's, that's the thing, isn't an it? an illusion. But six mil, I've never had it successfully stand up, you know, across the whole shot, or on the base, um, unless it's been with using the natural mm -hmm. proper grass tub. Um, but the thing with the grass tub, sorry, once you've made them, basically, once it's dry, you then, you can buy all sorts of different colours, paint pigments, whatever you want. Go and brush over very gently over the top of the turf, sprinkle on whatever colour you want. You've got a red flower, yellow flower, whatever mm. you want. So, so for Michael, going back to Michael's herb and fruit vegetable gardens, I mean, just tufts, is that the way to do it? Because I, I you mean, I almost yeah. thought, you know, you could, there's, there's another idea, a little bit of tinfoil rolled up in a bowl, painted mm -hmm. green. Would that look like a cabbage? Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, there's all kinds. I mean, like there's herbs, uh, again, Go for a dark green grass tub, mm. and then you can buy just your foliage, what you put onto your bases, or sorry, your static um, block, what you put onto your bases. All I've done with them to make herbs before, um, I've made some which are dark, just by putting glue on top of the grass tub, sprinkle on, and it looks like then it's got a bit of a darker flower on top of the lighter green mm. stuff itself, which gives the illusion it's something, some sort of plant growing, not just a piece of grass. That's fantastic. Well, there you go, Michael. Hopefully that helps you. Um, in answer to, I think it was Jake's question, um, Shadow and Flame says, I use natural fern for the willow tree giants, approximately two or three quid for a pack in aquarium stores made by a company ah. called Super. So there you go, uh, Jake. Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully that works for you. You might be able to find it if you search for it. But thank you very much, Dave, uh, from Shadow and Flame. We knew we were in the presence of experts for willow making. Uh, so there you go. Um, so I, I think what we're, we got to the stage where we've got back to the actual tree. We've yeah. got a, a tree with um, gl you, you've glued the clump foliage on with the hobby tack, and then yeah. you said hairspray on top. So after that. You've oh, got. No, sorry, just the, the hairspray part is it. Oh, sorry. That is just standard clump foliage. Right. No hairspray, nothing. Okay. What I used the hairspray for was when I first started out, I couldn't afford to buy different colours. Oh, so yes. So what I did, yeah, I went with a dark green one and then used um, blocks to brighten them up and then seal with hairspray. Right. Otherwise, I'm with you. Don't, don't use hairspray in white. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. So you don't need to seal it in any way at all. Not no, not just a standard tree with um, foliage on. No, no. So because I mean, to be fair, they have arrived. I mean, I, I mentioned earlier that I bought a few from you, and they, they've, you know, they've arrived. Yet yeah, the odd clump comes off, but largely they are they are there. So yeah, they have survived the journey. Yeah, is... I mean, they're built to last. But like, what I generally do is once I've made them, I'll do what we call a tap test. Sorry, mm. you basically hold it above your foliage box and tap it. Any loose bits will fall off, then you know it's solid. Not yeah that's like true that. and then so for your bases because and this is we might as well go through the whole mm -hmm. process once you've done yeah. that you always put um little bits of rocks on and like you know it's it's not just a standard base which i like about them actually and it adds yeah. a lot and it's the same with, as with models isn't it really the um the the whole base is uh what's it faces bases make a mini that sort of stuff and and yeah. that's exactly what you got here and, and just just walk me through this because you you go you just put little clumps on and then a few rocks and is that is that it or have you got a sort of specific um methodology behind it yeah that then that actual picture there harry were three um what i call mod pod face uh okay which what, were what about these? Um, just basically standard block uh mixed with some rockery um, i basically i see the entire base adding different rocks here and there um mm. bits of clump foliage um, anything else I wanted to put on there, and that was as far as them particular ones went. Um, I've since played around with different various techniques and come up with something which I think um, enhances them a hell of a lot and gives you more options where you just don't want to do a simple forest type base. You can make it into bases without any trees on. You can use the technique what I use to make really, really Craggy, rocky bases for the Iron Hills, for example. Yeah. Um, I don't think I've got but yeah. That's close. Yeah. Uh, the, the ones which I've probably just got all, maybe about 20, 30 different lots so far this year. Um, they, they do take a bit, of long, a bit longer to make. 
Uh, so you've got a bit of drying time involved um, after you've made the base. Um, but yeah, what I decided to do was, with base was simply like that, I wanted to give it a little bit more texture, um, mm. make it a little bit uneven, have certain areas where it's higher, where maybe I could then elevate a tree, make a three-inch tree into a five-inch tree. You know, give it that illusion that it's tall and what the actual tree is. Yeah. Um, so, first of all, what I actually thought, let me find the bottle for you. Again, fantastic product, Harry. I used it on um, tanks and what have you in the past. It's a, it's basically a weathering pigment from Vallejo yeah. called Russian Stick Mud. Now, one day I decided, what's it going to look like in the base? I pasted it on, it dried. I gave it a quick light dry brush. And after I finished blocking it, I thought, wow, that looks really, really good. Mm. The problem was, is the tub's quite tiny, mate. And it's yeah. 12 pounds a tub. One of those tubs, the largest board that I did, used almost an entire tub. So... Yeah, it's just no. not worth it, is it? It's not worth it's, it for it's, you. It's not, no. It's designed not to put it on bases that large. I know that, but I got carried away by the first result. Um, so, again, good old YouTube. Went on there, typed in. Couldn't find anything, so I put it into a general Google search, and it came up with one guy um, in Australia, not lucky for a change, <laughs> um, who basically showed what he called how to make mod pods. Um, and it was as simple as uh, I'll just grab some art and leave me yeah, show it yeah. No, that's fine. Oh, in that's... the meantime, hello Guyton. Uh, nice to see you in. Uh, even you're sorry you're late. That's okay. We've we're still still chatting. It might not caught too well on Harry on camera. Um, it does just look like a, a spatula of crap, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> that exactly what it is, Harry. Um, <laughs> Now, all I did was PVA glue. I buy it again, five litres of tub for a tenner. Um, so it's been like that with lost forever in your hobby life. Um, so so it's just, that's just PVA glue and sand? Yeah, PVA glue. PVA glue. Put your PVA in first. Then take an acrylic paint of your choice. So if you want in like a dark brown um, paint, acrylic ink, you can use anything. Just colour the, the actual... Um, sand and the glue. Mm. That's why I went out and bought them cheap ones for two good pieces, mate. What sort of ratio are you talking about? Half PVA or a bit more than that? There's no measurement for it. The reason there's no measurement is the more PVA you put in, the more sand you need to add to thicken the substance up when you mix it round. And the thicker the paste is, the harder it is to spread. So I generally get to consistency where I get it onto a spatula and when you hold it upside down, it takes its time to form right. very slowly. Um, so yeah, PVA glue, put your choice of brown, whatever, you can use beige, you can do sand bases, do what you want, grey, it doesn't matter. And that's, that's, that's all you do for the base, just just mix that up then? Rather, so yeah. I guess it guess it saves on that, um, it, it gives you a bit of texture, doesn't it? Rather than, yeah. say, putting the glue on and then the sand, which is exactly. flat, it gives yeah. you the, the lumpiness. Yeah. If I want basically a flat texture, um, I'll just add clay sand to it. If I want a more rougher texture, um, I've got basically bits of the old slate. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tiny pieces, dirt from the garden. I've seen people on other videos use dirt from the garden. Anything to give a bit more texture and, you know, bumps and lumps when you paint mm -hmm. it on. Um, so I've got... That's all you put them in. Right. Old coffee jar. Anything you've got an airtight lid on, it'll stay workable until the day you put it onto a base or expose it to air. Fantastic. But I've got one which is a, a fine um, consistency base, and the other one has got loads of warm to fix in. And um, so, so there you go. So you've done the the base. Uh, is there any painting involved in your trees? Because um, looking at it, no. I'm, I'm not sure whether. Yeah, and that's that doesn't surprise me because actually. 
he seems like you just use a mixture of flocks, a mixture of everything, and then like those bits of slate are just the colour they are. So I guess it saves you time. It saves anyone ma making yeah. these things time doing it, doesn't it? Yeah, I've, I've been through the past where I bought the um, the mould to make your own bowls and rocks. Yeah. And um, again, it takes too long. Mix mix around with plaster of Paris or whatever it is you use, you want to use to make your rocks out of. Yeah. It, it wasn't for me. Um, so went online, went to a garden centre online. This stuff, all modelling shops sell it. These slate. Um, well. It's almost it's, it, it it almost feels ridiculous going and making rocks out of I've seen people doing this tin foil thing and <laughs> yeah, like yeah, yeah. pouring resin into it and making stuff out of that when uh -huh. just go out and pick up some bloody rocks you know what I mean it's like what yeah. <laughs> just wash I guess you might have to wash them if you want because they might have some algae or whatever on but like generally slate or rocks in the garden I I, I mentioned to you before we came on and um, my gar I've got like a Victorian outhouse like an, uh, and it's like a shed thing but like a slate came off the roof it smashed on the floor I've got terrain for weeks then yeah. <laughs> exactly you're the only person who has that the slate fell off like yeah, exactly. I'm like, yes, terrain. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I picked up a massive bag of 25 kilograms worth of slate, which is over it, since 14 quid delivered. Yeah. And that's going to last me forever. These small pieces, big jump pieces. The reason I use that is, again, it looks great once it's on there with the foliage and trees in the ground. And it's also a cost cutter for yourself when you're buying. It, it saves it time, doesn't yeah. it? It does. It fills up your base. So you're not having to put hundreds of trees on there, which are expensive, and it looks great when it's mixed in, you know, with the trees itself. And Fantastic. You can as little as many as you want. So, and I guess... Yeah, that, sorry, that is the Mod Podge on. So if you were to add, that, that one, Harry, has got a massive big tree. Pieces oh, yeah, yeah, so I can see it now. Yeah, sorry, the, the lighting's not great, but, yeah, once you yeah. if you cover it, can almost cover the camera with it, you can see it better. Yeah, massive piece of slate. It's rock hard to touch. There's no no glue involved to hold that rock on. Mm. It must weigh about a kilogram and a half because the mod podge put it on a little bit thicker in the middle, push the slate into it. The mod podge with the PVA in once it dries, falls it. Solid, solid as a rock, literally. So all, all I do then with that Harry is dry brush the mod podge once it dry with a lighter brown. Yeah, and then it's that's just dirt, that's, isn't that's it? The only painting involved in the inside process. Yeah, Shadow and Flame uh, agrees with you. Says he bought a bag of slate chips from Poundland, and he's got enough forever now. Yeah, so yeah. so there you go. That's the tip. Yeah. Don't make rocks; just buy them. Uh, they exist in the world out there. We don't want to deprive the world of actual stones when made out of plastic and polystyrene. When you could just buy rocks. And um, so there you go. And and that's that's kind of it. That's the whole that's the whole stage process of you of of how to make a, a tree according to Andy Pennington. So so they're the trees and. Um, you know, and, and, and I mentioned this before, you know, you, you commission these, uh, lots of people buy them. I've bought uh, dozens of trees off you. And, you know, people can have a go at them. But yeah. I, I, you you seem to get something out of it. You really enjoy making these trees, I'm guessing. Otherwise, you wouldn't do it much. Or you certainly have yeah. a roaring trade doing it. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, people have asked me before, why do you do it full time? Uh, I've got so much admiration for people who are commission painters and do this, you know, as full time jobs. To yeah. me, it's a hobby. I want to still be able to enjoy it without having to worry about will it make me enough to pay a client there. Yeah. So I love to sit and watch your podcasts, um, your live shows, same with the um, Steve Crow one with um, Damien. And I'll sit and paint, but generally I'll be sat making trees, making bases. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. And that's yeah. how you do it. That's brilliant. Yeah. Well, well, it's been an absolute pleasure um, having you here for for almost this uh, an hour and twenty minutes. We've we've talked oh, loads really? of stuff, <laughs> including the news, uh, including the news about the the game and stuff. But uh, one thing I haven't done, which is something I do with everyone, is we play a game. Um, so this is uh, what this is what I call "What do your elf eyes see?" Uh, I finally came up with a, a thing. And um, so this is where I ask people to to. You know, um, have a look at a clip from the um, war, uh, the, the the films, the Lord of the Rings or Hobbit films, and then answer a question which I will tell you after you've seen the clip. So, um, so are, are you up for playing a, a, a quick game? Yeah, when you say get your, gla five, let me just put my get your glasses on, on. we'll we'll put the. 
Yeah, what do your elf eyes see? Okay, so um, this is the, the time when everyone starts getting ready, get your pens out, get you all this sort of stuff. So I'm going to ask you some questions. I'm going to ask you two specific questions about the clip that I'm going to play. So uh, all good fun. If you're painting, uh, take a break. Um, uh, well, actually, we're almost done anyway. So uh, take a break and have a look at this this clip and then uh, sit, maybe see, see if you can predict what the, uh, what the question will be after we've done it. Here we go. Here's the clip. Here we go. Yes, famous. Whoa, there we go. Get back. So we're in Moria. They have a cave troll. What a line. As you can see, I've downloaded it from someone on YouTube. I uh, don't know who that guy is, but good on him for putting it on YouTube. What a moment that ends on. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so that is the clip. What a, what a film. I mean, what a moment. This is one of my favourite bits of the film as well. And it ends on a, a good Aragorn death uh, kill. So um, I've got a question. I've got a question for you, Andy. Right, uh, people are guessing in the comments uh, what the question is going to be already. They're predicting it. Nathan T <laughs> said 6,000 of something. I don't know what. Um, but uh, the question is, uh, did you have any ideas of what, what I might ask you? Right. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. How many? I like that. Jake Winnett is thinking it's sixteen gallons of goblin blood that comes out of the guy at the end. I like that idea. Um. Okay. So how? The big question is how many arrows were in the door when they closed it? How many arrows were stuck in the door? Um. That the uh, the troll later smashes through. So he says, "There's a cave troll. Arrows to hit the door." But how many arrows in total? We're stuck in that door. What do you think? Everyone uh, start guessing now before Andy has a think uh, of what he thinks it could be. So um, did you did you, you did you spot the door? Were you counting the arrows on the door? Not at all. When you play this game, you're literally trying to count every single thing by five <laughs> actors, six of these, seven of them. I, I did look and I think I, what I think I saw, probably miles off, but can we give my answer? I think we'll just just give it a couple of seconds because there is a bit of delay in the comments. Um, and yeah. so I think people will probably they'll start coming in at any second, hopefully, if people are uh, trying to remember if they're even bothering, because it is a ridiculous quiz, let's be honest. Uh, but hopefully you get your uh, how many arrows are in the door answer any second now. And hopefully we should see it. But there we go. They're, they're coming in. Andy, uh, what do you think your answer is? Oh, goodness. Real life. I saw three. You saw three. Mm -hmm. OK. Interesting, interesting. Right, that's your guess. So I'll write that three. I'll put a big cross next to that. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. Uh, so let's just have a look at some of the other things that people are talking about. Oh, Nathan says, first thing, I'll, I won't show that because you might be right. He says, he says two arrows hit the door and he thinks there were two or three other arrows there also. Uh, he says, could be kill, kill order, could be it. Who kills first? Uh, yeah, fair enough. Uh, two elf eyes. Nice, Frederick. Thanks very much. Uh, uh, Gayton says four hobbits. No, a bit obvious that one, maybe. Uh, Jacob says 16 gallons of goblin gobby. Also says this. Adam Siren says Nathan's already got this. Yes, he has. Nathan's gone with five arrows in the door. Uh, Keith Laurie and Blunderbuss says three. Jake says four. And then Gayton says Nathan got it before. He's not even bothering having a go again. The correct answer is five arrows in that door well done to nathan uh you get a uh you get a bit of drink oh and drink. there you go that's just for you that's just for you nathan uh well done to everyone else who uh guessed i think uh so no one was exact on jake said four which was very close but no there were i did double check uh there were five um and 
the other question I did, I thought I'd give you two. I thought I'd give you two questions here. Um, that is not true, Nathan. Nathan says patrons get the question <laughs> an hour early. That is not true at all. Uh, this is a very fair game, uh, sort of, even though no one actually wins, uh, although you did. Um, the other question was, how many arrows did Legolas fire in that clip? How many arrows did Legolas? So Legolas, you know, well, he's obviously, Gimli's obviously the dwarf there. He's right at the back. Um, but he's defending Balin's tomb. He's he's waiting. But Legolas gets the kills in early, doesn't he? So mm -hmm. how many arrows and therefore how many goblins do you think Legolas killed uh, in that sequence that we saw there? Or we'll say a killed, you know, we assume maimed or, or at least hit with an arrow. Yeah. How many do you think that would be, Andy? Goodness, wow. You know what, I didn't keep count of that one. I'm going to pick a random one at five. Ooh, five, five. Interesting, interesting. I'm going to write that down. I'm going to write that down. And we'll see what other people uh, people are saying. Oh, okay. Nathan says tougher. Yeah, true. It's uh, he's, he's Here we go. We've got some more. We've got some more. Uh, Gerton says, is it three? Is it three Legolas killed? Uh, Legolas, uh, Michael says, is it six for Legolas? <sighs> interesting. Uh, Nathan says four now. Um, and Keith Laurie and Blunderbuss says six. The correct answer is five. It's five, so well done. Uh, Andy, you get it right. Here you go. You get a drink of Endraft. There you go. Endraft, just for you. Cheers. And there you go. That is uh, the silly game of uh, What Do Your Elf Eyes See? Legolas, what do your elf eyes see? Very good. There we go. We like to make sure that YouTube just hates me and, and takes away uh, all the copyright claims and all that sort of stuff by playing as many Lord <laughs> of the Rings clips as we possibly can uh, during the end. But uh, well done to everyone else. Um, there we go. Shadow and Flames uh, saying he's got to go now, but that's okay because we're going uh, now as well. Um, that's it for uh, Entmoot Live this week. Um, it's just coming up to 10 o'clock as well. So uh, it's about as much as I usually uh, like to do. Um, I will be watching um, the Battle Streams of Middle Earth tomorrow evening, uh, probably not the start, but certainly the end. Um, and hopefully you guys are all in there as well. Um, if you uh, if you enjoyed this, uh, do uh, like it and comment on the actual post as well, because that sort of helps deliver it up to people apparently. Um, and thank you very much, Andy, for coming along. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much for showing me how to make trees um, and uh, giving us all those little tips because your trees are amazing and I would highly recommend it. If people want to buy uh, trees from you, how do they go about doing that? Um, you can send me a private message via one of the groups on Facebook, come on all the related Lord of the Rings ones. Mm. Um, but I'm also going to be listening to some probably tomorrow anyway for general sale. Okay, so there you go. So if you look for what's at the Lord of the Rings trade group, you'll be posting some yeah. trees up. There you go. Yeah. So if you want to buy uh, those trees from Andrew Pennington, uh, just search for Andrew Pennington on Facebook and you'll be able to find them, hopefully. Um, thank you very much for, for joining us, Andy. I'll, I'll yeah, say my you. goodbyes. Cheerio. All right, take care, guys. Bye. Bye-bye. All right, right, there you go. That's uh, Andy, Andrew Pennington. Uh, thanks very much for him. Uh, and to, to everyone who's watching still, uh, really appreciate it. Um, it's it's always good fun having uh, having the whole, whole gang in once a month. Uh, I, as a reminder, I said earlier on in the stream, um, I'm going to be doing a giveaway, patron giveaway of those uh where are they i'll get the picture up uh not those these guys uh so when they are released they uh, i'll be getting some extra ones uh, just for patron supporters uh who uh, basically if you're a patron supporter down below uh, you'll be entered into a draw uh, just follow the links in the description below and you'll be in for a chance of winning dane and thorin stonehelm uh, when they come out and you won't have to pay the postage price isn't that amazing because you know um it's like 40 quid and you don't want to spend all that just for the one uh also um entmoot t-shirts um these are on the way to some patrons as well uh not on the way they're they're going to be um sorted soon but uh people are getting entmoot t-shirts and dice so it's all very exciting if you join us on the patron uh anyway enough uh, self-promotion thank you very much for watching uh the entmoot podcast uh, there should be some more podcasts soon, but there's one uh, out at the moment uh, that's just come out about, uh, what was the last one out? It was Law of the Rings, which was good fun as well. Uh, that was all about, um, do the profiles of the game accurately represent characters in the book? And uh, people like Nathan Talbot uh, were in there uh, as well. So, and Damien O'Byrne, which is mentioned a few times, and uh, Jeremy from the Green Dragon podcast. So uh, quite a, quite a star-studded show uh, podcast uh, list last time. So thanks very much for watching. And and I guess I should end on Burarum.